Kita ko yung pagningning ng mata nila na punong-puno ng pag-asa. Ako po ay nabubuhayan ng loob at ang dugo ko po ay umiinit upang magkaroon ng napakagandang talakayan. Kaya hayaan niyo ho na sabihin ko na tuwang-tuwa po ako na nang nagsabi ang inyong dekano sa College of Law. Saan po yung mga taga-College of Law dito? Tumayo po! Diyan ang laki ng iyong responsibilidad. Hindi mo lang huhubugin sila upang siguradong papasa sila sa bar, kundi ang unang-una pong kailangan natin ay maintindihan nila kung bakit sila unang-una naging abogado. At magiging abogado. Pinapangako ko po sa inyo, magiging abogado. Nakatutuwa po na laging na tuwing akit po tayo dito sa Baguio City. Ang mga memo memories po dito ay punong-puno ng kagandahan. Nung bata po kami, kaunti pa ho ang mga taong umaakit si Baguio. Kaya pag akit mo pa lamang sa matarik na Kenon Road, alam mo nang palapit na ng Baguio kasi parami na ng parami ang mga bulaklak at hindi gaanong marami ang sasakyan noon. So, ibang-iba na nga po ang Baguio. Ngunit ang mga alaala ay pareho pa rin. Isang kagalakan na pupunta sa isang lungsod ng panay kagandahan. Nakikita po ang inyong panagbenga festival ng buong mundo at natutuwa sa mga iba't ibang bulaklak na inyo pong i-display sa inyong mga float tuwing may parada. At may iba ka iba po ang Baguio culture. Siyempre ho, nung binigyan ako ng welcome honor na mayroon binigay sa aking welcome danza. Na po? May danza. Kaunti na lang na gusto kong mapaindak at sumabay na rin sa kanila. Ngunit sabi ko, baka dapat alalahanin natin ang inyong mga ninuno at bigyan ng kahulugan na ito ay isang pagpapakilala ng respeto sa kultura ng Baguio at ng mga karatig pook nito. Kaya, pag nakikita ko po ang sitwasyon sa Baguio, sa isang banda, maganda ho para sa negosyo, napakadaming turista. Malakas ang consumer spending sa Baguio, ang dami-dami mga negosyo at maraming mga gusaling ipinapatayo. Yan ho ay isang kagandahan na para sa mga negosyante ay uh, sinasalubong nila. Ngunit para sa mga residente po ng Baguio, naiintindihan ko po ang araw-araw niyong sitwasyon. Hindi ho kayo laging masaya. Ano po? Kasi ang araw-araw na realidad niyo, lalo na tuwing Sabado at Linggo, ay traffic. Sino pa mo naman ang taong ang gusto eh, magpapahinga ka na lang mula sa iyong trabaho, eh dadaan ka pa sa napakatinding traffic. Kaya, intindihin ho natin, ang Baguio ay sa katotohanan lamang, hindi lamang isang destinasyon para sa mga turista. Ngunit mas mahalaga para sa mga residente nito ay ito ang tahanan ng mga taga-Baguio kung saan sila namamahinga, kung saan sila nila hinahanap ang kaluwagan ng espiritu na kailangan ng bawat tao. Kaya, imabuti na niyo po na sana na sabihin kong bagamat ako'y taga na, naninirahan po kami sa uh, Kamaynilaan. Napakadali na pong pumunta dito sa Baguio mula sa Dati noong malita ko ay siyam hanggang sampung oras, naging walong oras, pitong oras, anim na oras na yun po ay kaya na po ng tatlong oras lamang. At yung iba po nga, yung mga kaskasero, <laughs> two and a half hours, ginagawa nila yung kanilang pasada. Naging accessible ang Baguio City, ngunit ang gusto kong pag-usapan una ay ano po ba ang kailangang balanse tungkol sa isang pagtutunggali. A struggle between keeping your personal space, that for your family, your right to relax, 
and have a livable, breathable, and non-congested city. And the right to development. In the usual model of development that we have seen creeping in Baguio. So you probably are thinking, is the traffic congestion, the destruction of much of the greenery worth the development? Is the overcrowding worth the high tourism rate? These are challenging questions that only you and only you as a community must answer. And it must start because you must have a clear vision of what you want. At the same time, I cannot help but observe that there must still be a fundamental policy that everyone must stick to that with rising urban development must come an increasing sensitivity to the personal space of the inhabitants. How are Baguio residents coping? How is your quality of life? Do you find it engaging for your spirit that you have this kind of development? I advert to it, but only because I want to relate it to our own struggle in the judiciary. Far be it from you to think that judicial reform can exist outside of a context. Any development, any action, any program must always be within an organizational and human context. And I will have to start with an acknowledgement that while some of our judicial reform programs, including the numbers, show that courts are resolving more cases than before, the problem of slow and inaccessible justice is still a battle to be won. We need to do more to make justice feel real to our people. Allow me at this point to remedy something I omitted to do in the beginning, and that was first acknowledge the very, very important people in this audience. So allow me first to, I'm sorry, for, I forgot to thank Engineer Bautista, Dr. Castaneda, Attorney Ison, Dr. Gachalian, and of course, my dear friend, Attorney Pablito Sanidad Sr., thank you for inviting me here. And I want to introduce to you our, the best and the brightest in our judiciary, our judges. May I ask again, just for a moment, for the following to rise. Judge Mona Lisa Chongson Tabora, please. <laughs> Judge Ivan Kim Morales. <laughs> Judge Ligaya. There. Itlion Rivera. She's a homegrown. Uh, she was homegrown in the judiciary. She started her life with us. Judge Mia Joy Olares Kawed. <laughs> Judge Emmanuel Racing. Judge Racing. Judge Cecilia Corazon Dulay Archog. <laughs> Judge Robert Mabalot. <laughs> Judge Glenda Soriano. <laughs> Judge Lodi Opolinto. Judge Clarita Tabin, <laughs> Judge Danilo Camacho, <laughs> Judge Marietta Browner Kualing, <laughs> Judge Jennifer Humiding, <laughs> Judge Amelita Delson Macaraig, and Judge Balokin <laughs> from Vigan. Thank you very much. So, as you see, I'm very, very proud of our very good judges. And I must emphasize that this is what our judges have been bringing to our country. That the reforms we have undertaken and are undertaking are steered by a deep empathy for marginalized Filipinos who feel that the justice system is rigged against them. We have taken what I see as a philosophical shift in recognizing the need for greater access to justice for our fellow men for cash challenge, distance disadvantaged, and information deprived. For some time now, the court has been looking not only at income levels to determine 
those whose access to courts we should facilitate. More broadly, we seek to reduce operational barriers that have made justice elusive and difficult to obtain for most Filipinos. Considering the diversity of our roughly 108 million population, coupled with the fact that this population is dispersed throughout 7,641 islands at home, while over 30 foreign countries host 10% of this population abroad, the court keenly understands that a new paradigm is necessary. Anong ibig sabihin ko po? Dati po ang korte medyo malayo sa tao. Ngunit gaya ng alam ng lahat ng human rights lawyer, importante pong ibaba namin ang access to justice para maabot ng mga madlang tao. Hindi lang po yung may pera, ngunit lalong-lalo na po yung walang kakayanan sa buhay. Hindi kaya kumuha ng abogado, hindi kaya magbayad ng legal fees, Tapos nga sa transportation expenses at lalong-lalong hindi nila kaya ng filing fee. Halimbawa po, ang paradigm shift na ito ang nangyari na sa expansion ng small claims courts. Ang mga kaso po sa small claims courts ay natatapos ng dalwa hanggat anim na buwan. At ang mga taong gaya ng mga OFW po, gaya ng karamihan ng inyong mga magulang, kaunti lamang naman po ang mga lead nila. Hindi po indefinite ang leave nila. Definitely po sila. Na dalawang linggo lang usually at minsan hanggang isang buwan lamang para sila makabalik sa bayan at asikasuhin ang mga pamilya at problema nila. Ang ginawa na po natin, ang mga abogado hindi na po kailangan sa small claims courts. Indeed, hinahayaan natin ang mga small wage earners, yung mga manggagawa po at yung mga maliliit na negosyante gaya ng mga vegetable traders ng Baguio. Kung may mga pautang po sila na hindi na babayaran at na hindi na kukubra, ang ginagawa po ng korte ay hinahayaan silang madaliing kubrahin ito pa, pa, lalong lalo na kasi hindi humagastos ang small claims. Affidavit lamang dadalhin nila, affidavit lang ang sagot, isang araw lang ang hearing, in 24 hours, may decision na po ang tao. In other words, yung mga, kayo pong mga bata, yung mga pautang nyo sa mga boyfriend nyo, yung dati noon, di ba po, may mga call center agent sa inyo, sa mga BPO, marami po yung cash, eh mahal nyo yung isa't isa, pautang kayo ng pautang. Eh nag-break na. Anong gagawin nyo? Ala nga namang kukuha pa kayo ng abogado. Hindi na ko kailangan. Basta't hindi lalampas ng dalawang daang libo ang inyong gustong kubrahin, pwede na po ng affidavit system lamang ang small claims system lamang po. Okay na yon. At naramdaman na rin po ng ating mga quest, pwede na yung mga quest natin dito sa quest natin sa Baguio, na ang mga reforma ay dumarating na rin dito. Mayroon na palang court decongestion officers na pinadala namin upang tulungan ang mga quest na malalaki po ang mga caseload. Hindi dahil ini-indict namin o sinasabi namin mabagal ang West, ngunit sa totoo lamang, kulang na kulang sila sa tulong. Yung 635 court decongestion officers na ikalat na po yan, may hustisya na po doon ito, at palagay ko may mga law students na po bang sumama sa hustisya program dito? Baka ho yung mga iba na masama na sa case decongestion, maganda hong malaman nyo na it is a very good learning tool for you law students. Sabihin nyo kay Decano Sanidad, samahan kayo at isama kayo sa mga court decongestion projects. Yung court decongestion project po natin, ipinababa na ang mga 51,825 priority cases sa buong bansa by 62%. Nasold na ho. So, kahit anong ilagay natin sa pool, ang taas po ng success rate na masusolve natin kagad ito. And upang padaliin ang access to justice, ang EJO program po was launched. And the EJO program has already resulted in more than 9,000 uh, prisoners, detention prisoners being released today. And I'd like to tell you that the flag here, nasaan ho yung mga taga-flag? Ay, sorry, yung mga taga-IDP pala ho. Maaaring tumayo ho yung mga taga-IDP. Narito po sila. At yung mga taga-flag po. Yung mga 
mga taga-flag ho, kasama nyo rin ho. Ayun. Kasama ho nyo, alam ho nila yung tinatawag nating mandatory legal aid rules para sa mga bagong abogado. Kayo po, kung maging bagong abogado kayo, may required service kayo under the mandatory legal aid rule for new lawyers. Para pong doctor to the barrios program yun. Ngayon, meron na rin po kaming revised guidelines for continuous trial of criminal cases which allow us to conduct trials with a, with a hearing set only one day apart and bawal ang dilatory postponements. And yung mga promulgation ng mga desisyon, hindi po lalampas sa 90 days ayon sa kaataasan na dapat naming sundin. Kaya dito mga reformang ito po ay nakakuha na ng international recognition mula sa U.S. State Department. Nang sinabi po niya na ang ganda na po ang nangyayari sa hudikatura kasi yung isang napakahirap pong human trafficking case sa Makati na solve or na resolve in five months time from the filing of the information up to the judgment of conviction. Otherwise po, ang usual time is five to seven years. Siguro yun ang experience nyo, Attorney Sanidad, no? Pero ngayon, hindi na ho dahil sa continuous trial na ginagawa. Ngayon kayong mga kabataan po, no? Bukod sa mga tagalo, yung mga kabataan. Ang future po ng korte, marami pong kami mga applications na nasa mobile system na igagawin. Ang filing po ng mga kaso in the future will be digitized and online. Yung mga status po ng mga kaso can be accessed and viewed online. At makikita nyo na po na dahil ang entire case management system is already in the system, ang dali-dali na po ngayon mag-manage ang mga huwes. Hindi na po kailangan tawagan pa mula sa Padre Faura anong nangyayari sa kaso nito. Ngunit mula sa Padre Faura, nakikita na po ang progress ng lahat ng kaso nationwide. Kaya't napakaganda po ng mangyayari sa ating Enterprise Information Systems Plan. Ngayon po, ang inyong pong napapanood ay si Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno sa kanyang kauna-unahang public appearance mula nang uh, mag-take siya ng leave mula sa pwesto. Nasa University of Baguio po siya at nagsasalita sa isang forum tungkol sa mga reformang naipatupad ng Korte Suprema. Kabilang daw dyan, yung mas mabilis na pag-usad ng mga kaso partikular yung sa mga small claims courts na uh, karaniwan ay nadedesisyonan na sa loob lamang ng 24 na oras. Pati na yung court di congestion projects na nagpababa daw sa bilang ng mga kaso ng 62% at yung online case management system. Kaya daw mas napapabilis na ang pagre-resolve ng mga kaso. Your lives will be much less difficult because you will be fully computer and able in every way. So right now, we have already 298 courts as of today and 279 are already conducting automated hearings. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng automated hearings? Yung automated hearings, pagpupunta mo kayo sa WES, tapos papakinggan po ang inyong motions. Ang gagawin po ng WES, i-hear ka na yun, tapos we, after the hearing, immediately mag, mag, i, sasabihin niya ang order niya orally, ita-type po ito sa computer, i-preprint at isa-serve ka agad. Dati po ang bawat order, mga 2 months ang generation time. Kasi sasabihin ng judge, submitted for resolution, isusulat pa ng judge, at email mail. Ngayon hindi na po. Ang mangyayari po ngayon ay computer generated, nakanda na po yung template para sa order, ita-type na lang po ang atmang ipapasok ng mga datos doon, at right there and then, isa-serve. Use case say, of delay in litigation time. So, yan po ang mangyayari sa ating mga korte. So, mga kabataan, kung anong na-enjoy nyo sa private world dahil sa computer automation enablement, nandiyan na rin po yan. It is soon. It will be in the medium term, be within your reach. Now, ayaw ko na po ikwento lahat ng mga judicial reform programs na people 
face the challenges of the times. But more importantly, and I state this, more importantly, for an independent judiciary capable of protecting its space among democratic institutions. So, in the same way that you feel that your personal spaces must not be unduly crowded, we Judicial independence can only be realized when we allow the courts to exercise its constitutional mandate free from undue influences, pressure, and intimidation. It is independent when it is able to give opposing parties opportunity, and this is very important, to present their sides without preconceived bias. And that is why I'm so proud of our Baguio judges. They are some of the best that we have. They are able to hold their heads high, to heads high, with the public perception that they are free from preconceived bias. And when it is able to evaluate pieces of evidence, uh, the courts, untampered and duly preserved, and are able to render judgments without and this is again important for judicial independence. Our judges must be able to render their judgments without fear of reprisals of any kind. Simply because the parties who lose are not happy. Of course, no losing party is happy with the decision. That is the essence, in short form, of judicial independence. Freedom from pressure, freedom from biases, ability to render judgments without fear of reprisals. And I must say that a truly independent judiciary will ultimately redound not just to the benefit of the judges themselves, but to the benefit of the Filipino people. It operates on a working system that guarantees that no person shall be unfairly accused on the streets as if anarchy would do. Ilagay niyo po ang sarili niyo. Itinuro lang po kayo na may ginawa ang kasalanan. Dadang kapi kayo, hindi kayo bibigyan ng, para, ng karapatan na isang hain sa inyo, ang reklamo sa inyo ay malilitis. At ang malilitis ay ayon sa imidensya. Kundi sasakdala na kayo at humasga na kayo na hindi man lang naririnig ang inyong boses. Ang tanong magbigay ng ganitong karapatan at kaya pumalagaan ng ganitong karapatan ng bawat citizen na marinig ay ang hudikatura. Ang hudikatura ay kaya magsiguro na ang bawat tao na pupunta sa korte ay hindi maghusgahan bago man lamang marinig. Judicial independence will empower courts to discern the truth from lies right from wrong, legitimate accusations from harassment or persecution. Alam kong marami sa ating mga kababaya sinasabing panahon na ay ayaw na namin bigyan pa ng pagdinig ang hudikatura kasi hindi naman kayo nag-perform for a very long time. At alam ko po, gano'n na dahil ng marami. Ngunit ito po ay isang hudikatura na nagpipilit na i-reforma ang sarili. Ang sinasabing po ng iba, sabi nila, I don't know, parang magano, yung sinasabi nila, kaya ka rin kumutin at parusahan balat araw. Ngunit, pag tingnan po natin sa Pilipinas, parang napakaikli ng long arm na yan. Parang kaunti lang talaga ang tunay na paparusahan sa kanilang mga krimen. Kaya may po tayong perception na nakuha natin mula sa mundo na may po tayong grabe impunity. Yung hindi pa at kayo po, ang hinihingi ko po, tulungan niyo po ang judiciary. Kung may kliman po ang tingin niyo sa kamay ng mustisya, maaari po ako makiusap sa inyo. Kayong mga nasa magpudikatura na, mga huwes, ang mga abogado ng IDP at flag, at, na, at uh, IDP badyo na, Please, do not.
you want to see hearts that are playing with love of country, hearts that put the interests of others above their own. That is who you are. Find it. Strengthen it. Fortify it. Unite with others of a common belief. Those who are not yet moving, call to them. Call to their better nature and show them that the path to this country is a path to greatness. And we must not abandon that path by apathy. And at this point, I would like to state something about what I am going through now. And I think I don't need to explain that. Right? Allow me to make a call for everyone to respect the impeachment process by allowing it to take the only allowable course under the Constitution. The House Committee on Justice has announced that it has already finished its proceedings. What happens next is critically important to our democracy. The only constitutional manner allowed for handling the impeachment proceedings in the House is for it to vote on the question of probable cause in a timely manner and not to drag it further, nor couple it with calls for extra constitutional help to facilitate the ouster of the Chief Justice, such as calling on the Supreme Court to do the job of the Senate and ask the Chief Justice, whether by an internal action or by an action of the Solicitor General, General and it is not, it should not be by the, uh, by the House delaying what is an already agonizingly long proceedings. Either the House has found probable cause or not. The proponents of the impeachment have bared their uncertainties. They have been contradicting themselves by saying they have solid evidence against me and at the same time stridently calling for my resignation. If they were so sure of their evidence, even to the point of perjuring themselves with baseless accusations, that they can prove that I committed a harvest of sins against the people, why not bring it to the Senate? Instead, we have this additional, terribly injurious spectacle where court and judicial and bar council officials are being threatened with administrative and criminal cases. I ask only one thing from the political leaders, only one thing. Give me my day in the Senate impeachment court or admit that there is no probable cause. That is also what I have been consistently saying to those who have asked me to sign, to resign. No, I will not. I will. I will give an account of my actions as Chief Justice to the people. I do not owe anyone the duty to resign. I owe the people the duty to tell my story. I am 
hopeful that after the impeachment trial, days of renewal for the Supreme Court can still be forged, united by the common desire to serve our people and protect their constitutional rights, especially in these troubled times. I remain steadfast in fighting for judicial independence. I have faith that in the end, what some unpatriotic men and women had intended for evil in the form of my impeachment, God will turn into good. Remember, all of you young people who love our country and would see its days of glory, you must not lose hope. You must continue to fight and never give up. And, where, and while the past few days seem to carry a dark foreboding, I say to you, it is when hope seems to be at its dimmest that you must be at your bravest. For without moral courage, the human race is a lost cause. We simply cannot give up. Magandang umaga at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the Philippines, the Honorable Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Maraming salamat po. This breaking news is brought to you by Vivo All Screen Phone. Look at yourself. Look at yourself and see a fighter, a father, a two-time MVP and world champion. Look at yourself and see clear.